Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. We've got a great one for you today. We're working again with Divi 5. We're going to be exploring backgrounds. We'll show you how to create a full screen video background like this one and all the other options that Divi 5 has to offer. And there's some fantastic options there. So let's start by creating a new page. We'll give our name a title, whatever you want to call yours. I'll actually make mine a blank page so it's got no header on there. When we view it that way, we can have a full screen video going on if you want that. So to do that, we need to go over the right hand side here, go down to template, left click on default template and switch it from default to blank page. That way in the browser, it will have no header. And of course, let's use the Divi Builder. I'm going to go ahead and build from scratch and by default it puts in a section wants us to put in a little row well let's just throw a single column in here and for argument's sake let's just use perhaps a call to action it's got a default background on it we'll make it a little bit bigger perhaps with a button before the buttons are going to show up you need to put a link in it so we're in the call to action if we roll down a bit here's the link once I put something in the link box there could put a hashtag as a placeholder you'll see the button shows up and it's that crazy pink because that's the way I've got my button set up in the customizers okay well just for fun let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on a little bit better while we're in it let's give it a fixed height perhaps over in design we'll roll down till we find height and I'll use a minimum height let's make it perhaps 60% of the screen height so I'm going to put 60 viewable height VH Great. and I want those contents sort of in the middle ish so again still in design we can roll back up to the top it should be being displayed as flex here with Divi 5 it is to get it all in the middle just going to justify the content there perfect now as you can see this has got a blue background here and that's the default background for this particular module to change any of the backgrounds and like I say this is common to modules rows the green tab and sections and we'll be working with the section in a moment so still in the call to action you can always access the background by going to content, roll down a bit, and you will find backgrounds. And we've got several tabs to choose from. The first one's background color. As you can see, it's got this default blue in it. Next one's a gradient. Next one's a background image. And we've got background video, background pattern, and background mask. And you can mix and match several of these, and I'll show you how in a moment. Well, the first one's very self-explanatory. It's a background color. You can choose whatever color you want here and just pop it in. That's uh, rather bright. Let's put it back on that default blue. If we move on to the next tab, we've got a gradient. If you hit add background gradient, it throws in a blue and a green and you can click on the blue or the green, change the color obviously to whatever color you want on yours. Do the same one for the other side. Let's make that sort of a purpley color. And at the moment, we've got a linear gradient that's separating from top to bottom. If you want it the other way around, you can change the direction down here. Let's change that to 90 degrees. And you'll see it goes from side to side and you can have it any way you want. But we've also got other options like circular. As you can see, the blues in the middle, the purples on the outside. Elliptical, very similar conical and you can get some amazing effects with that let's just perhaps put it back on circular and if you want to add another color all you do is just click on here it'll add another stop for you you can make it whatever color you want it to be and you can really come up with some crazy stuff and you've got opacity to play with graduated slider down here and obviously you pull it back that color is going to disappear the more to the right it is the less you'll see of it the more to the left it is the more full it'll be Gradients are amazing things. And you can keep adding to your heart's content there. Let's get rid of that one. I'm just going to right click on it, hit delete gradient. Takes that stop away. You can change the position. Top, top right, etc. I like it in the center for a circular one. But you've got options there. If you need to, you can repeat, repeat the gradient and get concentric circles going and things like that. 
And here's one we're not going to use at the moment, but we'll use this later on. You can put a gradient above your image and play with opacity, and I'll do that for you in a moment. Great. That's a brief overview of gradients. In our Divi 4 for Beginners series, we did a whole video just on gradients. You can do so much with them. Let's move on to a background image now. We'll throw in a background image. If we click on that, let's throw that crazy truck in. As you can see, it throws the image in there. Now you might have noticed with images, if you throw a sort of complex image in there that's got a lot of contrast, light and dark, you're gonna lose text. It's gonna sort of blend into it. So there's a fantastic little feature with images. You remember we put a gradient in and a color. If we roll down a bit, there's a fantastic little feature called background image blend, which will blend it with our gradient, or if we haven't got a gradient, it'll blend it with the color. And you can come up with some amazing things. If you just click on it, I'm going to use multiply. You'll see it multiplies it with that gradient that we put in just before it. Makes that text really easy to read and is really useful. And they've got some fantastic features. Do play with these. For instance, if we go to something like luminosity, I use that quite often. Not so good for the text there, but it's a great little effect. Difference is another great one. Like I say, play around with them. You can come up with some great effects. But for something like this, make that text stand out. I would use multiply. If you decided that perhaps, well, I'd like to see more of that image, you can always adjust it with the gradients. If we go back up here, let's actually get rid of this color because if I start adjusting this gradient, it may revert to the color that's behind it. So to adjust the gradient color, click on the top stop, which is the blue, which is that central bit. If you want less of it, just pull it out and you'll have more of the image. And obviously exactly the same with the purple bit. Just click on it, pull the opacity down and it'll fade back more into the image. So that really does give you some great options there. Fantastic. Well, I said I'd tell you a bit more about the parallax effect. Now, there's one little caveat. It doesn't usually work with Divi 4, at least it didn't usually work with a merge or a blend. So if I turn this on, you'll see it's taking that blend away. Now, we've got two different ones. There's true parallax, which we've got right here. As you can see, I'm still on the multiply, but it's not actually doing anything for us because we've got the parallax on. Now, what true parallax is, if I scroll this up and down, that image will just move at a slightly different rate from the rest of the page. To make that happen, I need to make this section so I've got a bit of scrolling room. I'll quickly go into there, over to design. And let's make the minimum height. 200 viewable height. Should give us a little bit of scrolling room there. As you can see, as I'm scrolling, that picture is actually moving, but it's moving at a different rate to the front of the site there. And you can get some amazing effects doing that. If we go back there and we switch it out to CSS parallax. Remember background's always under content. Back to our image. That was true parallax. They're both moving just at different rates, foreground and background. CSS parallax is also known as fixed background. Now if I scroll, you'll notice that image stays exactly where it is. That's a great little feature. I've used that a lot on sections and things like that. It's very dramatic. But for our purposes today, I think that's our better option. Okay. Now, before we go on to background videos, let's go and show you background patterns. You can overlay patterns. We've got an image. We've got a gradient there. We can add a pattern if we want to. Crazy spots there. You can choose from various different patterns here. The little mesh there to make it white in color. Let's make it a whole lot smaller. I'm going to use a custom size. Let's make it say 10. And we've got a little mesh on the top there. And as with everything else, if you want to see less of it, you can click on the color, take the opacity down. If you want to see more of it, bring the opacity up. You want to make the grid a little bit smaller, put a smaller number in there. You've got a real mess. 
or mesh, I should say, not mess. It does look like a bit of a mess. It's making my eyes go a little bit blurry there. But there's another little option for you with a background pattern. Let's take that one away. And of course, you can have a background mask, which you make all kind of crazy shapes with. If we click on this one, add a background mask, as you can see, it's just showing part of a call to action. And the actual mask color itself, again, if you want to show a bit more, we can pull the opacity down. So you've got a hint of the image behind. And again, just play with it till you've got something that you like. Now, if you want to, you can transform, flip horizontal, flip vertical, rotate, invert, so that the other side's dark and the other side's light. If I do that again, you'll see, it's just inverting the colors there. And again, you can come up with some fantastic designs using this. And if you want to, you can use it on responsive edit it for responsive devices, make it fit. You can also use blend mode with your masks. Great, well, let's move on to background videos. Now, word of caution, background videos are great, but if you're hosting them locally on your site, like we're gonna do here, they do take out resources. So you really wanna make sure they're optimized and keep them fairly small. So first things first, let's go get us a video. I'm gonna use an MP4, I'm gonna to go to pexels.com and it's saved my search. I put in silly night. I selected videos up here rather than photos. This is what it came up with. And if you roll your cursor over it, it'll show you an example. So you wanna roll down, select one that you like the look of. I think I used this one before. Don't hit the download because some of these are in 4K and they'll be absolutely huge and they will really slow your site down. So I'm gonna left click. It's gonna open in a new window. I'm gonna hit the little chevron up here it's going to give us some size options. This one's not too bad. Biggest I need, if, especially if we're going to go full screen, is 720. So let's take that one. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hit download selected size. Now these are absolutely free. Check the license on them. But most of them are Creative Commons. Give them a little donation if you feel like it. Now we can go back to our site to add a background video. It's an MP4. I've already uploaded mine from earlier on when I was playing with this, but if you haven't, just go to your downloads and drag it in, drop it here. This is the one that we want. It's a bit bigger than I normally use. I'd probably optimize this a little bit more. If you haven't got an optimization software for video, just Google, there's plenty of free ones out there. Let's upload the video. As you can see, it's loaded that video into the background. And by default, it's gonna loop round and round and round. That's only, I think, a 13 second video. Yeah, you just saw it loop around there. But that's gonna work fine. But perhaps we wanna blend this video with something. Well, we've not really got any options to do this here, but there's a few little workarounds that I, I like to do. So I'll show you exactly how I do it. Let's, well, let's take this background away for a start trash that one. In fact, I don't want any background on this particular module at all. We'll just leave it exactly how it is. So we can take that image away and we'll lose the gradient and we'll take this original color away. Okay, let's put this video in our section. So again, I'm going to go to a section. You know how to get the backgrounds. Content, here's the background, here's the video. We'll add that same video back in again. I need to shrink this section back up to normal. Remember we made it 200, which is stretching that video out a crazy amount. I'll just take it back to its normal size by putting that back. And then if we just save, and we'll quickly refresh this, the video is gonna load the correct size there, perfect. And we can read our writing. This isn't too bad actually. But like I said before, sometimes videos are great, but sometimes there's so much contrast and things, your content gets lost. And looking at the background here, we go back into our section again, down to the background. There's no way of sort of adding or merging a color over the top to darken that down. So I've got a little cheat. A quick fix would be just go into this row right here, 
put a background in there. Know how to get there? Background. Let's just add a background color. For our example today, we'll make it black. And then you can pull the opacity down. It'll darken out the video behind. You can still see it nicely, but you can read your actual content there, which is great. Now, say you wanted this whole dark area, still a little bit too dark. Say you wanted this dark little mask over the whole video. Well, we can match the row size to the section size. So what we'd have to do with that, we're still in the row. First thing we need to do is make it full width. We can go to design. We can go down to our size just down here. I want to make it 100%. And max width below, I want 100 and make sure that's percentage there. Our rows now stretching full width. I want to make it full screen height too, but I don't want these gaps. Now the gaps are actually in the padding in the section that's pushing the row down there. If I take the padding away, you'll see that the row and the section will be the same size. Let's do that. We'll go into the section. I want to make it same height. So I need in design to go down to spacing. Here's padding top and bottom. I just put a zero in there and hit the chain. You see it's taking those gaps away and then finally if we want this to be full screen video we just need to make our row just click on the row itself we're in the call to action green tab for the row and we can make either the row or the call to action in design go down to sizing here we go one minimum height of 100 viewable height vh click off of it we've now got full screen perfect and I kind of want the content in the middle so while we're in the row we can roll back up to our flex settings up here and we can just justify it to the center right there perfect and we've got a nice little full screen video background that we can read the content over quite easily but you can still see the video going on there nicely so there's some of the little background options that we've got with Divi and they are absolutely awesome. Remember, in any module section row, just go over to content, down to background, and you'll find all these options here. Let's make sure this is going to work on the front end. Let's save our draft. And we'll preview. And there we have it. Nice little full screen video background. So I hope that's answered some of your questions about backgrounds not really changed a whole lot since Divi 4 but there's plenty of options out there and you can get some really stunning things going so i hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our youtube channel thanks for watching have a great day